Hi, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer. Let's talk mountain weather and ski conditions. And we've got two different storm systems to talk about for the rest of the week into this upcoming weekend. And the first one is rolling into the Tetons and the Wasatch as we speak. In fact, live camera from Jackson Hole. Snow starting to come down. They'll accumulate snow all day today into tonight and tomorrow. They're saying about 477 for the season. I think it's possible we get close to 500 when all is said and done. Um, by the time we get into this weekend and through both of these storm systems. So let's get into the uh, the analysis here, radar and satellite. So we've got one storm rolling out of Colorado, drop some nice snow in the mountains of Colorado. That'll be exiting. But here is that storm. You can see the diagonal of snow coming in with a cold front out of the Pacific Northwest, diving down through uh, Idaho and into uh, northern Utah and Wyoming at this point through Montana. So that's that area of snow, that band of snow that's right on the front end that is uh, beginning to move into the Tetons and also eventually moving into the Wasatch as well. This will not deliver a huge amount of snow on the front end, but it will definitely freshen things up as we head through today, tonight, and into tomorrow. Tomorrow should be a great day in a lot of these places as well to ski the Tetons down into parts of uh, uh, Utah and also Idaho and southwest Montana. So this is the this is the jet stream. There are again two different storm systems that will be affecting the west as we head through the uh, the rest of this week. So uh, that's the current pattern. Look at the northwest type of flow coming out of the Pacific Northwest delivering both of these cold fronts into the west. All right, so this is the first one. This is on Wednesday and there is one low pressure. I'm going to mark this sitting right here basically over the four corners so the jet is guiding that first storm down that's the one that is moving through or moving into the tetons and the wasatch right now that low will continue to move towards colorado and into the four corners and spread that snow into colorado between tuesday and wednesday now there's another storm behind it and i'll mark it it's up here in the pacific northwest coming out of british columbia and parts of the uh, Canada, northern Canada. That will drop in with the jet stream a little bit later in the week. But notice uh, as this slides through, you'll have some jet energy that will keep the snow going. Let me mark that second low for you. So it's a one two type of setup here for the rest of the week. Here's the jet on Friday. You can see the dip right here with that second area of low pressure as the jet carries that through the west. And that will provide some nice snow for the end of the week and into the weekend. Now, after this, I got to point this out. It looks like a big area of high pressure will settle in across the west as the jet kind of curls up over the top and we get some big time ridging into the weekend. So things may dry out across the west on Saturday, Sunday proper. And I'll show you that, how that plays out on the future radar um, here. So as I move this ahead into the future, the snow in Colorado moves out. Then we begin to move that first storm in. You can see all of the snow crossing the mountains into tomorrow morning, all the way from Big Sky to Jackson to uh, the mountains of the Wasatch all the way back toward parts of uh, uh, parts of Nevada. Now, between Tuesday and Wednesday, it moves into Colorado, and so all that snow overspreads uh, those areas. Tahoe is also included in this. Then we begin to watch back towards the Pacific Northwest as the second storm system moves in. You can see it here with the snow on the front side. That is what will be moving into Big Sky, the Tetons, the Wasatch, and then eventually into Colorado for the end of the week. Now, that's storm number two. Here's radar on Friday morning at 5. I'll just to underline that. So on Friday in the morning, you've got snow uh, moving through uh, the Tetons, the Wasatch, and moving in to Colorado at that point. Now the timing here on this storm at the end of the week, it really is dependent on exactly how quickly the first storm moves through these areas. It looks like it will be through Colorado by Friday night and clearing during the morning on Saturday. And I'll push this all the way on the Saturday so you can see that. It's always possible there's some play here of plus or minus 6 to 12 hours that it, uh, if it gets stalled a little bit, it could last into Saturday morning in Colorado. But right here, we're playing it out as it's already moving away. Now, I want you to notice by Saturday morning, um, the west, it is incredibly dry at this point and it looks like high pressure will be settling in for Saturday behind this second storm and would probably last into Sunday as well as the jet moves way up into British Columbia and begins to steer a lot of the weather up there. So that high pressure is something that will be moving in that I marked right there for most of the weekend. So let's talk about accumulation numbers. And with these two storm systems, I think we're going to see some decent snow. Um, so let's move this uh, let's move this out and we'll bring in the uh, the snow accumulation. 
All right, so between, and I back this up to include some of the snow that's falling right now across the west into tomorrow morning. And what I'm really focused on is, all right, so how much can we expect across the Tetons, Big Sky, and the Wasatch into tomorrow? These are probably a little bit on the conservative side, these numbers that I have. I would say it's anywhere from two to six inches for the Wasatch and probably four to six inches for Jackson Hole and Grand Targhee. And you can see that snow would then spread into um, Colorado as well as we kind of work our way into Wednesday morning. Now on the back side, there's a little bit of snow there as well. So by Wednesday morning, uh, look at the nice snow in the southern mountains of Colorado. If you're skiing Wednesday, I'd look at Silverton, Telluride, and Wolf Creek for some of that good new snow. Look at big sky up to 11 by that point. All right, so then that storm moves away. We'll look to the Pacific Northwest between Wednesday and Thursday for the next storm system and some of the newest accumulation numbers. Look at Rainier up to a couple of feet. Timberline's added more. Stevens Pass and Baker. Even Revelstoke starts to add a little bit more. Big sky's up to a foot. Now between Thursday and Friday, that second storm will be dropping into the Tetons, would be dropping into parts of the Wasatch as well. So let's move the clock ahead into Friday. And there you can see the number starting to tick up. And again, these are probably a little bit on the conservative side for Jackson, Grand Targhee, and Park City, and Alta, and Snowbird. Oh, look at those numbers. Continues to accumulate in southern Colorado. That's going to be a, a, a good target area to, to plan on if you're skiing this week. Those numbers look really good. Um, okay, let's move into Saturday morning. So if you're skiing Saturday morning, new snow accumulation by Saturday morning looks like this. Um, we've added more in Colorado as that second storm dives in to Colorado. Saturday might be a good place to hit Colorado. Um, we've added snow all along I-70, all the way into the southern mountains. Wolf Creek's over two feet at that point. So that's the way it looks right now. We'll have a better idea on timing as we kind of work our way into tomorrow. I'll do an update and we'll talk more about the timing of these two systems. But at least we've got something on the board here with two different storm systems for this week. All right, thank you for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care.